How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel and another edition of my roster review series, the final one of this series. I'm really excited to get going with this one. It is my favorite team in the CFL and that is the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And for many reasons, I'm very excited for this season for Hamilton. There's a lot of interesting things to talk about with this team. Their playoff failures over the past few years, despite their regular season success. So I'm really interested to talk about them today. So let's get into today's schedule. We'll start off with the positional rankings as always, where every position on this team ranks relative to the rest of the league. Then we'll go into the projected starters slash ratio possibilities, where they're gonna start the Canadians this year. Really interesting discussion there. And then go into my team award predictions, most outstanding player, awards like that. And then my final thoughts, a general prediction and a key question surrounding this team this year. And as a reminder, as always, there are timestamps in the description. So if you wanna watch a certain part of the video, there you go. And without further ado, the quarterback position, it's gonna rank third in the CFL. And this is one I really struggled with because honestly, if I was gonna rank the quarterbacks based on 2019 and all the evidence that we've seen on a CFL field previously, I wouldn't have Jeremiah Mazzoli as the number three quarterback in the CFL. But what they do have compared to any other team in the CFL is they have two guys that we know can play. We know that these two guys can absolutely play. You could argue Toronto as well, but I think there are a lot more things up in the air with that. But we know that Jeremiah Mazzoli and Dane Evans can play and be successful with this team because we literally saw it in 2019 when Mazzoli goes down and they didn't miss a beat when Dane Evans came in. Just really excited to see who they start at quarterback this year. And, and as of right now, we still do not know who is going to be starting this year for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. We're literally a week away from the season opener. I have no idea. Nobody has any idea who's gonna start. And it's easy to see why, because it's just so close between these two guys. I don't think there's necessarily much to separate them there. So we'll talk about both of these guys. So Jeremiah Mazzoli, more of the experienced option. We've seen him play at times at a most outstanding player level at the CFL level when he's been with the Tiger Cats, but he's also incredibly streaky in my opinion. He can have games like a game he had against Edmonton a few years ago. It came up in my timeline the other day when he completed like 25 passes in a row. But then you also have games where he's, you know, hovering around that 50% completion percentage. He's sometimes all over the place, but he creates the explosive plays at a rate that is very helpful through a CFL offense and helps you win games. But on the other end, I think Dane Evans is actually, believe it or not, I think he's the more physically talented quarterback. I think when you look at this guy throw, uh, the ball just pops out of his hand. It's so natural to him. But the problem with him is the decision making. The decision making, I mean, it's to be expected with a guy that has so little pro experience. But you saw it at times during the 2019 season. You saw it in the Grey Cup, rear its ugly head there. But for a guy that was just starting his first set of games in the 2019 season, he did extremely well. I'm really fascinated to see how he does going forward if he's the guy that ends up taking this quarterback job. But it's super interesting to see who they decide is going to be starting out of these two guys. And then you have Jamar Smith, who's a practice roster guy. Uh, we actually know who made the active roster and who made the practice roster as they just made their cuts the other day. And uh, Smith played his college football at Louisiana Tech. So we'll see what happens with him. But overall, I just really struggled to where to place this team in terms of the quarterback rankings this year. I don't think Mazzoli or Evans is a better quarterback than Bajardo or Trevor Harris, for example. But I think that the two of them combined, having that solidified quarterback position, whether one goes down, or I don't really think they can make the wrong call here. Honestly, I think both these guys have proven that they can play at the CFL level. So I'm just really excited to see how it plays out and who they go with this season. At running back, they're gonna rank fourth in the CFL and I think it's a very talented group. You got a couple Canadians in this group, but you also have a couple of talented Americans as well. So we'll start with Sean Thomas Erlington, who really, really flashed potential during the early 2019 season, then suffered a season ending injury about four games in, but he was looking explosive as a guy that was like a really late draft pick. I think he was an eighth round draft pick in the CFL draft out of Montreal. And then he ends up you know, breaking onto the scene the last couple of seasons with Hamilton. And I'm just really excited to see his development going forward. Is he gonna be the starting running back for this team 
as we'll talk about in a second. It's a big competition between him and the next guy, Don Jackson. But Burlington, a guy that showed a lot of explosiveness. He's a guy that can catch the ball in the backfield, really showed that ability. There was one particular play, I believe it was against Toronto, where he took a 75 yard pass to the house and it was incredible. So I really am impressed with Sean Thomas Erlington, what I've seen so far of him on a CFL field, but we'll see if he keeps it up and if he can stay healthy this season. And they'll go on to Don Jackson, the American running back that's competing for this starting job here. Uh, he comes over from Calgary, had a pretty down 2019 season after having a really good 2018 season with the team. He just struggled to stay healthy in 2019, so we'll see how he does this season, but he's a pretty explosive running back, has a good blend of power and speed, but you just like to see the consistency him hitting the hole a lot more consistently. We'll see what happens with those two running backs. I think you'll see a good rotation with those two guys regardless, but who ends up being the majority of the carries, who knows. And then Malik Irons and Jackson Bennett, two Canadian backups here. Irons, a third round pick in 2019. Saw some time as a rookie, but he's not a guy that has that top end speed, but he has a lot of power. He's a bigger back, so if you need a few yards, Really good option the Tiger Cats to put in as a change of pace option there. And then Jackson Bennett, gonna be a really good special teams player. Can carry the ball occasionally on offense. And you know, has a good amount of explosiveness when he does have a little bit of grass in front of him. So I think it's a really good top four in the running back room for the Hamilton Tiger Cats. And then you have Wes Hills out of Delaware. He spent some time in the NFL with the Detroit Lions, appearing in a couple regular season games. So we'll see if there's anything there. He does make the roster. And then Nikola Kalinich, a guy that I didn't really know where to put on this list in terms of positionally. I could have put him with the receivers as well, but he's listed as a fullback, so I didn't know where to put him. Uh, but he's a really interesting player. You can hand the ball off to him a bit, uh, but he's more of a guy that you want to use as a receiver and a blocker. Was a guy that showed a little bit more potential than your average fullback in 2019. I think he had about 12 receptions as a rookie coming in as a second round pick. So I'm really interested to see how he does going into his second season here and how the Tiger Cats deploy him. They have a really interesting thing going on now with him and then their first overall pick this year in the draft, Jake Burt. So we'll see how they use that. I think there could be some double tight end sets, some non-traditional sets that you don't really see in the CFL that often. So we'll see how Kalinich factors into this offense, but I just put him with the running back group because I didn't really know where to put him. Now at the wide receiver room, they're gonna rank second in the CFL and this is a special group. And you know, it doesn't really take a genius to explain this because looking back at what they did in 2019 was just really evidence of it. Obviously you have the 2019 most outstanding player, Brandon Banks, had a season for the ages. Just an explosive player, can still be used occasionally as a kick returner. And when he is used like that, he's one of the best in the league still at that. But he's really developed into this perennial all-star receiver that is really effective in a lot of different ways. He's a guy that obviously the speed is gonna stand out for you. When he gets open space, especially on those little swing out passes where he can just, he has little grass to build up some momentum and he can just blaze by you. He's just an explosive player, uh, has good hands, not necessarily the best hands in the world, but he doesn't need to because he's just so athletically talented and he's just so good at just making guys miss in the open field. And he's just a perfect fit for the Canadian game. Just a perfect example of a guy that fits so much better in the CFL than the NFL. And then Braylon Addison, a guy that is the second half of the number one wide receiver duo arguably in the CFL in my opinion. Braylon Addison had his breakout season in 2019 with the Tiger Cats. He was just as important in my opinion as Brandon Manx to the Tiger Cats success in 2019. And it looked like they weren't gonna get him back for this season, but he gets cut in the NFL and he comes back and it's just such a huge get for the Tiger Cats to have him. He's a guy that's gonna run a little bit more of a complex route tree than Banks does, but he's also a guy that, you know, you can hand the ball off to in the backfield and use in very creative ways using the waggle. And I'm just really excited to see 
how he follows that up. But we'll have to see if Banks and Addison can continue to be that number one receiver duo in the league this year. And then you have Jalen Acklin, the team's most outstanding rookie from 2019. A guy that has really great hands, first and foremost. I think that's his biggest strength as a receiver. It's just a really good possession guy. He can create some big plays down the field, but he's mostly going to do most of his damage in the intermediate areas of the field. And then Devere Posey, an interesting ad here, uh, signed with the Tiger Cats in the 2020 offseason and is a former Grey Cup MVP from his time with the Toronto Argonauts. Really explosive receiver, but he st struggles to stay healthy is the thing. And that's why I think it's really important that the Tiger Cats have so much depth in this receiving core to make up for the fact that he may not always be there on the field, but he's a really great player when he's there. He was arguably Montreal's most dangerous receiver when he was on the field in 2019. So I thought this was a really good high reward type of signing here for the Tiger Cats. And then Marcus Tucker, a receiver that is gonna make a lot of tough catches for you. He's not gonna demand the ball a ton. He's a great team guy to have in the locker room. I just think there's a lot of good things to say about Marcus Tucker. And then Jalen Marshall, a guy that could be the breakout guy in this receiving core. He came on near the end of the 2019 season. He's a former Ohio State Buckeye. Really fascinated to see how he does this season as a pretty explosive athlete. But we'll see if he puts it together at the CFL level, if he's worked on the waggle a bit. And then Jake Burke, he was the number one pick in this most recent CFL draft. I didn't know exactly where to put him because he's kind of a fullback kind of type listed as a fullback on the Tiger Cats roster, but is a guy that I think because they spent such a high draft pick on him, they have higher intentions for him than actually just being a fullback in this offense. I think he's going to be used as a receiver. And I think, like I said before with Kalinich, I think they're going to use Burt and Kalinich in creative ways. I think they're two really interesting players in terms of their body types. So fascinating to see what Jake Burt is used like as a rookie. And then David Unger was a second round pick a couple of years ago, is likely the number one Canadian receiver in this offense. But we'll see if they even start a Canadian this season. I'm not too convinced that they will. And then you have Tim White, a guy that is a former Arizona State standout who showcased a bit of returnability at the NFL level, got onto the field for a few games down there. So we'll see if that showcases it at all. Is that a position that they want to showcase him at? But he does make the roster here. And then the rest of these guys, Pappy White down to Stephen Dunbar Jr. there, these are all practice roster guys. And Pappy White was a former Ohio Bobcat, a college that's produced a lot of CFL players over the past few years. So watch out for that. And then Tyler Ternowski, a guy that I actually played with in high school from Hamilton, local guy here, had an outstanding university career with the University of Waterloo, kind of a slot kind of guy, a little bit undersized, but he's just such an explosive guy. He knows how to get open, really ideal receiver for the Canadian game. So we'll see how he does if he ends up getting onto the active roster at any point during his rookie season. And then Marcus Green, he played his college football at Louisiana Monroe and has spent time on the NFL's Falcons and Eagles. So we'll see if there's anything there. They keep him around on the practice roster. And then Steven Dunbar Jr., he played his college football for the University of Houston, but struggled to get on the field so far in his pro career. Been a practice squad guy for the most part. So we'll see if there's anything there. But really good receiving room here for the Tiger Cats. A lot of experience, a lot of depth. I'm really interested to see how it turns out this season. Now moving on to the offensive line, they're gonna rank second in the CFL. And this is another one I really struggled with because there are so much movement among the CFL teams in terms of the offensive line position this season. There are a lot of retirements. There are a lot of guys that weren't brought back to the CFL. And the Tiger Cats actually have a lot of holes on this offensive line. There are a couple of questions here, but you also have the high end ability. I think the top three guys of this unit are absolute studs, and that's what drags them all the way up to number two in the CFL. So we'll start with Chris Van Zell the guy that was the reigning most outstanding offensive lineman in the league. He's a really solid player at right tackle. Does everything right. He plays with a nasty streak. Is going to get after it in the run game, but is also a really good pass protector as well. There were a couple games where he was a little undisciplined. He took a couple unnecessary penalties. There was that one game, I think it's against Montreal, where he took like three penalties in the game. It was just, what are you doing, Chris? But a guy that is getting up there a bit in age, but he's just a really, really good tackle at the CFL level and winning that award last year was a prime example of that. And then Brandon Revenberg, who I think is honestly the best guard in the CFL. I think if I had to choose, I think he is. 
He's just such a stud. Still so young. A guy that's really good in the run game, but he's also a guy that doesn't make many mistakes in pass protection as well. Uh, just not a lot to say about him that's negative. He's just a very solid offensive lineman and one of the main reasons why this team is so effective despite being a pretty one-dimensional offense, at least the last time we saw them. And then Darius Sirocco, a guy that is starting at the other guard position. He may be moved to center. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But Sorocco, a guy that doesn't really get a lot of credit because he's overshadowed by Van Zell and Revenberg in this offense, but a really good player as well. Another guy that the Tiger Cats have also developed over these past few years as a former high draft pick. And then Jesse Gibbon, who was the number two overall pick out of Waterloo in 2019. Really interested to see what he brings to the table in year two. He was getting onto the field a bit. Saw a little bit of action late in the 2019 season. Yeah, I think he started a game against Toronto in the last week or so. I think this year he's going to take the jump and be a starter for this offense, given their retirements of Mike Filer, who was their starting center. So I think he's going to plug in either at the center or guard position. We'll see what happens there. And then Trayvon Tate, a guy that when I went to the open practice a few weeks ago, he was the guy that almost got all of the snaps to the left tackle position. I think he's really penciled in there. And I think they've really been eyeing that since the 2020 offseason when they signed him. And then Kay Okafor, a third round pick in 2017 and has stuck around here as a decent backup to Van Zella tackle. Just a good backup lineman to have here as your sixth guy. And then Coulter Wood Mancy coming in as a rookie out of Guelph was their first round pick in the 2020 draft. Really excited to see how he does. He was a center while in college. So we'll see if he's the guy that actually ends up taking over this center spot at some point this season. And then the rest of these guys are all practice roster guys that I don't have much to say about because they're, they're an offensive lineman so I don't really know until I actually see them with my own eyes on the field. So John Yarborough, Jordan Murray, Joseph Bensk, a Canadian here. We'll see how those guys do if they ever get onto the field this season. But overall, I think the high end ability of those top three guys and then Jesse Gibbon, who was a high draft pick that I'm expecting a lot out of. That's why it gets dragged up to number two in the CFL, even though it does have questions like a lot of other offensive lines in the league this year. Now, moving on to the defensive line, they're also going to rank second in the CFL. And the reason for this is just the star power here. So you got Ja'Garrett Davis, honestly, one of the most refined pass rushers in the CFL, just is so consistent with his motor. I'm not going to really help you too much on the ground, but he's just such an explosive player that has a very good toolbox of pass rush moves. And then Dylan Wynn was really the breakout star of this defensive line in 2019. Really, really good defensive tackle. One with power, one with speed. A very effective guy. They moved him a bit out to end at some snaps. So has a little bit of versatility as well. Just a, one of the best defensive linemen I evaluated in the 2019 season. And then Ted Laurent, a guy that's actually a Canadian. I don't know why I didn't put an asterisk there. But uh, just a really dominant player throughout his career. Been one of the best Canadian defensive linemen in the league over the past handful of seasons. Been here for a while and is obviously going to be a dominant run stuffer up inside. That's primarily what he's good at. But he's also a guy that provides a lot more pass rush upside than your typical just plugger kind of defensive tackle there. And then Julian House there, probably going to be this team's other starting defensive end. It's a pretty high effort player. Plays a lot on special teams as well. At least he did in 2019. Has some pass rush ability and uh, was able to reduce in the snaps he did get there. But I think this other defensive end role will probably be a rotational kind of situation here for the Tiger Cats. And then speaking of which, let's go to Lorenzo Malden, who was a rotational guy from 2019 that managed three sacks in 11 games. So we'll see if he can build on that, get on the field for a more high percentage of snaps this year. And then Mason Bennett, their first round pick from 2020 out of North Dakota, was extremely productive while in college. and. Because Laurent's a defensive tackle and Bennett's a defensive end type, I don't know how the ratio situation works there. I don't think Bennett is necessarily going to start for this unit, at least pretty early on. But I think he's going to rotate in and get a good amount of snaps as a rookie. And then Malik Carney is a former UNC standout who has a bit of bulk, so he could be a backup to Dylan Wynn at defensive tackle. And then Eddie Wilson, another guy that's a potential backup to win at defensive tackle. He comes in at 295 pounds. He played his college football at Purdue. So we'll see how Carney and Wilson figure into this defensive line. 
as guys that have made the roster here. But I just really do like this defensive line group, and that's why it's going to rank second in the CFL. It has the star power and the experience at the CFL level that I trust. Now moving on to linebacker, they're going to rank sixth in the CFL, and I think this ranking would have been a lot lower if they didn't have Simone Lawrence, who was the East Division nominee for most outstanding defensive player, I believe, in 2019. Lawrence is a guy that has a ton of range at that linebacking position, will cover a lot of grass, make a fair share of explosive plays for you in terms of big hits and getting the defense energized. But he's also a guy that will make his fair share of head scratching plays. I mean, uh, the discipline issues speak for themselves, but is also a guy that in general is just such a net positive for you that you kind of put up with it because he's such an explosive player and he's kind of the heart and soul of this defense. But beyond Lawrence, you got a lot of unproven guys. So I put Desmond Lawrence as the strong side linebacker here. It's kind of a big position battle for the Tiger Cats. It's been a mystery all season, but when I went to the practice that they had open to fans the other week, they had Desmond Lawrence and Cameron Kelly as the two guys that were mostly rotating in there at the strong side linebacker position. So I think it's going to be one of those two guys. I put Lawrence in here, but we'll talk about Kelly a little bit later on. Lawrence is a new guy with no CFL experience, but he comes to the CFL after spending some time with the DC defenders of the XFL. So we'll see how he does this season, if he's the guy that they use in that role. And then Javon Santos Knox, a guy that is a really explosive athlete, but I don't think he's that good of a coverage player, at least laterally he's not that explosive, but he could be really effective as a blitzer up this defense. Maybe they can hide him a bit at middle linebacker where he doesn't have to have that big of a coverage role and he can blitz the quarterback on a lot more of a consistent basis and be a really great player in run defense. So I think he's probably the starter at middle linebacker, but I'm not completely sure. And then Chris Frey Jr., uh, holdover from 2019, rotated in a bit at that linebacker position, but is a really good special teams player regardless. So I think he's for sure has a spot on this roster. And then Tyrese Beverett, a dynamic special teams player from 2019, who began to rotate in on defense as the season went on. So we'll see if that trend continues. Is he going to be playing more of a role on the defensive side for this team? We'll see. And then Kyle Wilson, a guy who's been under contract since 2020 and appears to have made the roster here. Again, another guy that has no CFL experience. And then you have all these Canadians here. So you have Nick Cross, their first round pick in this year's CFL draft. Not too sure how much he plays as a rookie. I don't know how much he gets onto the field in the linebacking core. I don't know how much they're going to play Canadians at that spot. But I think for sure he's going to be a good special teams guy, has a lot of range. I even saw them running him at safety a bit at that open practice, so he has a lot of athleticism. We'll see how he factors in in the future here. Excited to see his development. And then Bailey Felt made a second round pick from last year. We'll see how it goes for him. Curtis Newton and Miles Milano don't know too much about those guys, but they do make the roster here. All of these guys made the roster, and uh, we'll see how they all factor in. A lot of these guys going to have to earn their keep on special teams consistently throughout the year if they want to stay on the roster. We'll see how this unit shakes out. There are a lot of questions beyond Lawrence. Now at defensive back, they're going to rank fourth in the CFL and this unit doesn't have as much of a ceiling that they did in 2019 because of the retirement of Delvin Pro, who is obviously their best player on that position. But they do have a lot of experience still here and a lot of really good players that couldn't step up and play that role. So we'll start with Cariel Brooks, a good halfback. Played really, really well in 2019. Not much to say about him, just a really solid player. Siante Evans, the veteran, came over from Montreal in free agency. Had his moments of really big struggle in 2019 with Montreal, but previously in his career with Calgary, he was a stud there. So we'll see how he does fitting into this defense. I think he could have a bounce back year with better players around him. And then Tundi Adelike, the Canadian starter here at safety, really explosive athlete who could also contribute a little bit as a kick returner, even though we haven't seen him do that a lot when he's been in Hamilton, but came over in 2019 from Calgary and was just a really great addition for the Tire Cats, was really impressed with him. And then Frankie Williams, a really good field side corner for this group. Maybe not the best coverage guy in the world, but he's a guy that is very passable at that position because of what he brings for you as a punt returner as well. He's just such a great player for this team to have on the roster here. And then Jamal Roll, a guy that's probably going to start at Delvin Bro's old corner spot this year. He actually got a lot of playing time in 2019, was 
really heavily rotated in, started a bunch of games as well. So I think he's ready to take on that role, and I think he's a decent replacement there for the Tiger Cats to replace Bro. And then Cameron Kelly, a guy I talked about a bit before, is potentially going to be starting at strong side linebacker for this team. So I think he's worth noting here. Spent 2019 with the Pittsburgh Steelers after earning a contract from his time in the Alliance of American Football. And then Channing Stribling, a former Michigan Wolverine, was briefly on the Tiger Cats roster in 2019. Another former AAF guy. And then Mike Daly, a really good Canadian backup here at Atunde Adelike. Used to be his job, and then Adelike came in in 2019, took it over. But he's a really good player that is going to contribute on special teams and just very usable in terms of rotation on the defensive side. Not going to hurt you when he is in there. So really excited that they brought him back. And then Stravros Katsatonis, a guy that was a 2020 draft pick of the Tiger Cats, makes the roster here. But really just a really experienced defensive back room. Doesn't really have that star player like Delvin Bro, like I was saying before. But just overall, I think they have the depth and the experience to make up for the loss of bro and remain one of the best units in the league now on special teams they're going to rank fourth in the cfl and i really struggled with this one because i think they have the best return situation arguably in the cfl because you have two guys that are, we know are just explosive return men but you have this kicking situation that's kind of just becoming a running joke at this point i don't know what's going to happen with this kicking situation because on the final roster so they made the final cuts yesterday they left four kickers slash punters on the roster. So we know that's not going to stay the same until opening day. So we'll see another cut here coming in the next couple days for this unit. So here are the guys that are here. Taylor Barclay, uh, American kicker, who was handling most of the kicking duties when I saw the open practice. So maybe he's the leader in the clubhouse for the kicking job. And then Joel Whitford, I think he's the global guy they keep around here because uh, he's actually the only guy that they did keep. So I think he's place on the roster is very secure apparently he's just going to be a punter for this group and then jimmy camacho another american guy there uh and then michael demogala the lone canadian kicker that they have in camp we'll see if they keep him who knows what's going to happen with camacho being brought in here it really signals that they're not really happy with their kicking situation so we'll see who they decide to go with for opening day against winnipeg but who knows at this point? Gordon White is your long snapper. And then Frankie Williams and Brandon Banks, two of the best return guys in the CFL. Not much to say about those guys. Just you've seen it. If you've watched the CFL, Frankie Williams was explosive in 2019. Took over as that main return guy for the team. And then Brandon Banks, obviously a guy that is playing a bigger role now in offense over the past few years. But when they do need a play, a lot of the times they will plug them back there as returner. So I'm really split on this special teams unit. Obviously, you got a kicking situation that's just anyone's guess at this point, but the return guys are just some of the best in the entire league. So it was really difficult to see where they put them. The special teams rankings were very hard to put together, by the way. Now, for the rejected starters on offense, there are a couple questions. So we'll start with the receiving group. I think Banks, Posey, Acklin, Addison, as long as all those guys are healthy, they're starting. But then Tucker, I put him in there because he's the most experienced option compared to all the other guys. But I could see him being a guy that just rotates in. Um, maybe they start a Canadian at that spot, depending on their ratio situation. So that spot is coming up in the air. But I think Marcus Tucker will play a lot regardless. And then on the offensive line, I think Rebenberg, Sirocco, and Van Zell are for sure obviously going to start. But then Given, I think, is for sure going to start at some point this season. Maybe it's not right away. But I think that because they invested such a high pick in him, he's going to end up starting at some point this season. So... Uh, I'm pretty confident putting him in there, not bolding him. But then Trayvon Tate, the leader in the clubhouse at left tackle. But we'll see as a guy that's new to the CFL, sometimes they flame out pretty quickly. So we'll have to keep an eye on that left tackle spot as a potential danger area for Hamilton. And then going on to the backfield was where you have the two big questions for this offense. So who's going to start at quarterback, Jeremiah Mazzoli or Dane Evans? I went with Mazzoli here. I think that's kind of the consensus opinion, but... I mean, obviously, Evans is so good that you can see the team going with him as well. And then at the running back position, Sean Thomas Burlington, a Canadian starter here. If they go with Don Jackson, the American guy, as the starting running back, it completely changes the ratio situation, I think. If they start Jackson at running back, they could go with a Canadian receiver. So that kind of consideration is a big thing for the Tiger Cats going into this season. Like I said, I think Thomas Erlington and Don Jackson will play a lot of that backfield. So there are some questions on this offensive side of the ball, but I think it's a really good offense, honestly. And I don't think 
you'll see many people disagree with that. Now moving on to the defensive side, I have less questions for Hamilton. On the defensive line, I don't really have many questions. I think those are your main four guys. I think maybe Lorenzo Malden rotates in a lot with Julian House there and makes him Bennett get some run there at defensive end. But other than that, I don't think there's much change in terms of the starters from 2019. Uh, Simone Lawrence in the linebacking core, obviously. And then the two guys beside him is really the big question. So the middle linebacker, Javon Santos Knox, I think is a guy that could really boom or bust for this team. I think he has that athletic potential to be a dynamic player for this defense if used right, but I can also see it busting out. So we'll see how he does this season. And then at strong side linebacker, as I talked about before, there's a competition between Desmond Lawrence and Cameron Kelly. Get used to those two names. We'll see who they decide to start here. I went with Desmond Lawrence. That's the guy I saw most often at that strong side linebacker position when I saw the open practice, but really hard to say based on just one practice that that's the guy that's gonna start. So I think that's a true uh, competition that they're still trying to figure out who's gonna start that spot. But I think the secondary is completely set. I think those are your main five guys and then these rookies could potentially rotate in here or there. Now moving on to my team award predictions for the Hamilton Tire Cats going into this season. We'll start with most outstanding player. I'm going with Jeremiah Mazzoli with a slight caveat that if Dane Evans ends up starting for the Tire Cats, I'm going with him instead. I just think this offense is built for the quarterback to produce, put up huge numbers. They don't run the ball the whole time and they have this really talented receiving unit. And then most outstanding defensive player, I'm going with G. Garrett Davis. I think he's just your guaranteed 12 to 15 sacks a year. Just a dynamic pass rusher and I think He's really going to get shown the love this year as really one of the best pass rushers in the CFL. And I don't think a lot of people talk about him as in that conversation for the number one pass rusher in the CFL, even though I think he's quite worthy of that. And then for most outstanding Canadian, I'm going with Brandon Revenberg, just a dynamic offensive lineman, consistency on the week to week basis. Got to get him that nomination for that award. And then most outstanding offensive lineman, I'm also going with Brandon Revenberg. I think. The team went with a different approach this last season. They nominated Revenberg for most outstanding Canadian, but for most outstanding offensive linemen, they nominated Van Zell, even though Van Zell's also a Canadian. So it was kind of weird how they did that. They wanted to give credit for, to both guys, I see it, but I think Revenberg gets the nomination for both awards this time around. And then most outstanding rookie, I'm going with Coulter with Mancy because I think at a certain point this season, I think he's going to be in the starting lineup. Uh, whether that's through injury or just through pure performance. But I think he's the guy that has the most opportunity to actually play a lot this season in terms of the Canadian rookies for this team. You could go with Desmond Lawrence as well. I'm just thinking off the top of my head here. Now moving on to my final thoughts about the Hamilton Tire Cats going into this season. So the key question I have for this team is obviously, do they make the right call at quarterback? And what I mean by this is they need to make that initial decision and get it right. They can't be switching back and forth between quarterbacks this season, even though, you know, it, it's a very ideal situation to have two guys that are capable of starting and winning games for you. But that also brings into question when you start losing games, you start to get the doubt from the locker room, you start to get the division in the locker room. And so they need to make the right call right now. They have to get off to a good start, whoever does start to begin the season. And I think that's such an important question for the Tire Cats to answer going into the season. Same thing with the Toronto Argonauts as well, as I mentioned in that review. But with that said, my general prediction is this team is gonna finish first in the East Division and is a much deserved Great Cup favorite here. I think there's a lot of pressure riding on this team this season, obviously with the Great Cup in Hamilton. But I think that, you know, when you look around the league, this looks like the best roster on paper. And I think if they can just capture some of what they had in 2019 and, you know, get a couple guys that have breakout seasons this year, I think they'll be in really good shape to capture the first place in the East once again. And the East is usually typically historically less strong than the West is. So the Tire Cats have a much easier path theoretically to the Grey Cup than other teams in the league so i'm really interested to see if they actually end up winning the great cup this year i don't know if they can live up to the hype but i think in terms of being a preseason favorite they're absolutely deserved in being so i think they were the best team throughout the course of the 2019 season they had that horrible game against winnipeg there's no getting around the great cup in 2019 against winnipeg but overall just a really good team and has a lot of continuity going into this season and 
I'm just really excited to see how it turns out. But with that said, that is going to be the end of today's video, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Once again, my name is Jason. If you want to support the channel, the best way to do it is by hitting that like button and subscribing to us and settle for more CFL content just like this. I appreciate all the support. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.